Over the past 24 hours, the president has continued to improve. He's met or exceeded all standard hospital discharge criteria. He'll receive another dose of remdesivir here today, and then we plan to get him home. It's been more than 72 hours since his last fever. Oxygen levels, including ambulatory saturations and his work of breathing, are all normal. Though he may not entirely be out of the woods yet, the team and I agree that all our evaluations, and most importantly, his clinical status, support the president's safe return home, where he'll be surrounded by world-class medical care 24-7. I'd like to bring Dr. Dooley up to review some more spe specifics. Good afternoon, just a brief update this morning. Uh, as Dr. Connolly mentioned, the president uh, continues to do very well. His vital signs this morning uh, were notable for a temperature of 98.1. His blood pressure was 134 over 78. A respiratory rate of 17 respirations per minute. His heart rate was 68 beats per minute. And his last oxyhemoglobin saturation was 97% on room air. He currently uh, does not endorse any respiratory complaints. And aside from our uh, evaluation with the multidisciplinary team this morning, uh, has maintained a full schedule uh, ambulating and working on the White House medical unit. I'll now turn it over to Dr. Garibaldi to again discuss therapeutics. Thanks. Hi, good afternoon. And again, I just wanted to echo the sentiment of what an honor it is to, to be part of this, this wonderful team here at Walter Reed. Uh, yesterday evening, the president received his third dose of remdesivir. He tolerated that infusion without difficulty, and his kidney and liver function continued to be normal. Our plan is to give the fourth dose of remdesivir this evening before he goes back to the White House. And we've made arrangements to deliver the fifth and final dose of his treatment course at the White House tomorrow evening. He continues on dexamethasone. And again, the plan for today is to continue to be up and out of bed eat and drink and, and work as he is able. Um, and I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Jason Blaylock, who's an infectious disease specialist and the chief of medicine here at Walter Reed to give some updates on infection control. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, what an honor it's been to be part of this medical team behind me uh, and to care for the president. Since the president's arrival at Walter Reed, uh, he's received medical management that remains in line with national clinical societal guidelines uh, for treatment of COVID-19 infection. In addition, uh, both myself and Dr. Wes Campbell uh, have worked very closely with uh, various uh, laboratories in the area, state-of-the-art facilities to include USAMRID and RARE on uh, obtaining advanced diagnostic testing to really inform the White House medical team of both the status of the president as well as his ability to transmit virus to others. Also, we have worked very closely with the Walter Reed team uh, to ensure that uh, we are looking very closely at infection control prevention strategies and the right posture so that the president can safely return uh, to his residence. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Conley who uh, will answer any final questions. Thanks, Jason. I mentioned it Saturday, but I'd like to reiterate myself just how grateful the president and I are to the men and women of Walter Reed, our colleagues at Johns Hopkins, as well as the many federal, private institutions that we receive support from. And so long as everything continues on the track that we're, that we're experiencing right now, this time, as the president already tweeted out, is to get him home later today. With that, I'll take a couple questions. Discharge back to the White House when he was given steroids. You've said that he's still on those steroids. Those are medicines, as, as you know, that are usually given to COVID patients who are on ventilators or um, with low oxygen. So, did you over treat him? And if he's still on that medication, how is it safe for him to return to the White House? So, we, se uh, we send patients home with medications all the time. Uh, he, in fact, yesterday afternoon, he probably met most of his uh, discharge requirements uh, safely from the hospital. Uh, and he's returning to a facility, the White House Medical Unit, that's staffed 24 seven, top notch, physicians, nurses, PAs, logisticians, and uh, the unit here, uh, the team here behind me is gonna continue to support us in that nature. Dr. Conley, Dr. Conley, what infection control measures are you taking? And how was it safe for him to drive around in a cloth mask yesterday? And how is it safe for him now to return to the White House where there have been so many cases? How is any of this safe? So the, the, the president has been surrounded by medical 
and security staff for days uh, wearing full PPE. Um, and yesterday, uh, the U.S. Secret Service agents were in that same level of PPE for a very short period of time. Uh, we've worked with our infectious disease experts uh, to make some recommendations for how to keep um, everything safe down at the White House for the president and those around him. Um, we're looking at where he's going to be able to uh, carry out his duties, uh, you know, office space, and um, and I'll just say that uh, it's in line with everything we've been doing upstairs uh, for this for the last several days. Sir, are you, can you tell us, please, on testing? Can you tell us when he had his last negative test? Was it Thursday? Was it Wednesday? When do you remember when he had his last negative test? I I don't want to go backwards. How uh, contact tracing for people who are around him to I understand. The contact him? tracing, uh, as I understand it, is being done. Uh, I'm not involved with that. Um, so. Why did you begin this declaration that you leave, or was this uh, something he pushed for? No. So we try to get patients home and out of the hospital uh, as quickly as is safe and reasonable. Every day a patient stays in the hospital unnecessarily is a risk to themselves. Um, and right now there's nothing that's being done upstairs here that we can't safely uh, conduct down uh, home. You said that seven to 10 days was a window that you'd be concerned about. I don't think we're there yet. So do you have concerns about potential worsening or reversal and what are your plans for addressing that if it were to happen? You're, you're absolutely right. And that's why uh, we all remain cautiously optimistic um, and on guard uh, because we're in a bit of uncharted territory when it comes to a patient that received the therapies he has so early in the course. Um, so we're looking to this weekend, if we can get through to Monday with him remaining the same or improving better yet, uh, then we will all take that final deep sigh of relief. Um, but as I said, 24 seven world-class medical care surrounding him down there. Uh, we're not gonna miss anything that uh, we would have caught up here physically going to be in the White House and how do, what does that look like? How do you keep him safely quarantined? I wish I could go into that more, um, but but I just can't. Doctor, what can you do begin dexamethasone treatment? So that has something to do. Yesterday we talked about that, uh, the several little uh, temporary drops in his oxygen, and we had discussed that uh, as a team and elected uh, to start it early in case that persisted or worsened. Uh, the potential risks and side effects we all discussed. We looked at the data um, and decided that uh, we'd rather, uh, you know, push ahead on it than hold and risk, uh, you know, the opposite. What about CT scans and chest x-rays? What have you seen from his campaigning? As far as travel goes, um, we'll see. Mental status. Can you talk to about whether he has any neurological symptoms? Does he have any side effects from his medications? Any fogginess from the virus? No, I think you've seen the videos uh, and now the tweets, and you'll see him uh, shortly. You know, uh, he's he's back. Yeah. Have you seen pneumonia or any inflammation in his lungs at all? So we we've done routine standard imaging. Um, I'm just not uh, uh, at liberty to discuss. Doctor, so you're, so you're actively one. not telling us what those lung scans showed, just to be clear. So um, there are. HIPAA rules and regulations that uh, restrict me in uh, sharing certain things uh, for his safety and his and his own health uh, and and reasons. Can you share how many times you said his oxygen dropped several times. Can you share how many times he was on oxygen? You said you we, checked we, with the nursing staff yeah, yesterday. Uh, yeah. He, yes. Yeah. So he he uh, the two episodes like we talked about yesterday, uh, and both times that he received a little bit of oxygen and, re and recovered immediately. Was that oxygen required? Um, no, it wasn't required. He wasn't short of breath. He wasn't looking ill. It was more of us trying to uh, anticipate needs and see how he'd respond. And in both cases, um, it came right off. He didn't. He didn't need it for, for from very long at all. You were on board Air Force One for multiple trips. Are you at all concerned about your own exposure and exposure to the medical team? I, I, I am concerned, uh, but uh, as the CDC says, there are uh, caveats for essential employees. Um, that as long as you continue to test negative, um, you remain symptom free and uh, you keep a mask on when you're out and about, which we do uh, inside the hospital 24 seven, um, then, then you can carry on your duties, yeah. Oh, the president's an impatient man. Has he been itchy to get out of here? <laughs> um, 
the, the president has uh, been a phenomenal patient during his stay here. Um, and he's he's been working uh, hand in glove with us and the team. Um, and today got to the point he's holding court with, the, with those of us around him, the whole team, going over all the specifics, the testing, what the future is. Um, and uh, and we, we have been back and forth on what's safe and what's reasonable. And he has never once pushed us to do anything that was beyond uh, safe and reasonable practice that we all first uh, wanted. Well, on this medical team who recommended against the president leaving here and going back to the White House today? Um, or, or any White House staffers? No. Doctor, the president said don't be afraid of COVID. Do you agree with that? Should we not uh, be afraid? I'm not going to get into what the president says. His, uh, his heart, liver, and kidney function was normal or improving. Um, improving, does that mean that there were effects and is it all normal? Like, what's up with that? Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all normal right now. Uh, I would say he, he appeared to be a little dehydrated uh, Friday. Um, he, he, got, he was able to just drink and recover from that, uh, and yeah, everything looks great. How did you set the board? Before he started campaigning out in the country, what, what sort of things do you yeah, So the big first thing that we need to do is that there is no evidence of live virus still present that he, he could uh, possibly transmit to others. And that's what the infectious disease experts uh, and some of our partners, um, military civilian entities, doing some of these advanced diagnostics just to see uh, as soon as we can identify that. Um, routinely, we talk about a 10-day window, you know, CDC guidelines, um, but we, we're checking him more routinely than just waiting 10 days, there's a possibility it's earlier than that. There's a chance that it's a, it's a little bit later, but we will know as soon as possible. Uh, and then we will look at him clinically. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Why have you decided not to use uh, administer hydroxychloroquine to the president during his time here? Uh, we're, I'm not going to go into all of our debates about specific medicines and, and therapies. There are dozens of therapies that we were made aware of that we considered that we discussed and debated and, and looked at you know the, the existing literature on um, and this is the regimen we chose yeah. Yeah. Symptoms of COVID, is he having some of the muscle aches has he lost his sense of taste and smell uh, no we were just talking about that what symptoms he has left and uh, he he's he even the slight cough that he used to have, uh, he doesn't really uh, complain of at all. He hasn't ever complained of uh, muscle aches. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's up and back to him old self predominantly. Next Monday, just to be clear, how long will he still be actively shedding the virus? Um, so this, this morning, I believe there was even a, an accounting by Dr. Fauci referencing a, a five day, the first five days of illness. Uh, that, that you know people are most likely to shed live virus. Um, there's a reason there's the 10 days is because most people by that time after seven days, uh, most folks don't have culturable live virus. They put it to 10 just to give some extra space. Um, it's never 100% you know between everybody. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. I, I can't. I'm not going to put a specific number, uh, but we we look at that that window is all I say. <laughs> confined to his residence or will he be allowed to return to the Oval Office? We're, we're going to do uh, whatever uh, it takes for the president to safely conduct business wherever it is he needs to do uh, within the residence and White House. And I, is, I wanna... he on, is he on blood thinners and also has he been using, uh, have you been giving him Tylenol, Advil, anything. Oh, that to bring came up. Yet. I would like to say he has not been on any fever reducing medications for over 72 hours. Yeah, he's he's on a a uh, routine regimen of uh, you know COVID therapy. I'm not going to go into specifics as to what he is and is not on, um, but. You said in the middle read this here that the president had a mild cough, some nasal congestion, and fatigue uh, on Thursday. Now back to my uh, colleague Jim yep. Jacobs' questionnaire. The reason knowing when the president's last negative test is is important. Uh, for that reason, your words, what you said, and, and also for the contact tracing. Uh, but would you recommend it that given those symptoms that he uh, go, that the president go to that Bedminster uh, fundraiser? It's, it's not up to me necessarily, uh, the president's schedule, but I would say that uh, it wasn't until after he returned that we really sat down then knowing uh, the, the, the news of the day that we really dove into how, how are you feeling, what's, what's going on? Those were the symptoms he was experiencing on Thursday. Uh, I'm not going to get into 
uh, you know, operations. When was his last negative test and what was his viral load? I know, everyone wants that. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have his viral load. Um, those are some of the diagnostics that we're sending out uh, that will really tell us when it's safe for him to get back out and around people. Negative test was any abnormal test, any or any of his lab tests abnormal. Uh, I'm not again. Uh, HIPAA kind of precludes me from going into too much depth and things that uh, that you know I'm not liberty or doesn't wish uh, to be discussed. Um, at some future point, maybe. Uh, but th today, sorry, I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you. So, Dr. Sean Conley, they're wrapping up the press conference from the president's Thank physicians, you. who repeated a headline the president already made that he says he's going to be leaving Walter Reed at 6.30 p.m. today. The doctor said that he met or exceeded all the discharge criteria for the hospital, said it's been 72 hours since his fever, his oxygen levels are normal, cautioning that the president is not entirely out of the woods yet. We'll get another dose of remdesivir today, is still on doxamethasone, that's steroid as well, but they do believe he will be able to go back to the White House. I want to bring in Dr. Jen Ashton uh, first, and, and Jen, we did see all the doctors behind. Dr. Conley said they agreed with the recommendation for the president to go back to the White House. We did, George, and we heard from all those specialists for really the first time since admission. The single most important statement came from Dr. Blaylock, infectious diseases, who said their management of the president was in keeping with guidelines for COVID-19 patients. When you dig down below that, George, what they're talking about is generally Infectious Disease Society of America classification for are you critical, are you non-critical, are you severe um, or non-severe? And that is the key in deciding how to manage these patients, specifically when to initiate treatment with steroids, in this case, dexamethasone. The key thing, George, if you look at the Infectious Disease Society guidelines, which were re recently updated on September 25th, severe COVID-19 disease defined as having an oxygen saturation of greater than or equal to 94% on room air. We heard yesterday, Dr. Conley state that the president's O2 sat had gone to 93. He did require supplemental oxygen, putting him in that severe category. So again, that's that largely guided their decision to initiate treatment with steroids because George, based on the published data recovery trial in the New England Journal of Medicine, if steroids were given to patients who were stable, it actually suggested a trend towards a worse outcome. But so a uh, significant statement by the infectious disease specialist there. What, what they didn't want to get into too much detail, though, on the questions of why the president is going home, even though he's still on the steroid. That's not a surprise, George. We, we heard them say, and you and I have talked about before, the availability of, of sophisticated medical management within the White House walls is substantial. This is not like you or I going uh, home to our residence. But again, there's plenty of outpatient management of COVID patients that even for the layperson that can occur. And you heard uh, Dr. Conley say their goal is to get patients out of the hospital as quickly as possible. That's our goal for the average uh, man or woman as well. So no doubt the, the president will be followed extremely closely even while he continues um, his isolation within the White House. Two other questions they didn't want to answer. They didn't want to answer questions about his lung scans, whether the president had any presence of pneumonia. Yeah, they, they um, no doubt imaged him with CAT scans of the chest, plain radiographs or chest x-rays and ultrasounds of his lungs. Um, again, that's that fine balance between protection of patient privacy and HIPAA regulations and the fact that this is arguably the most high profile COVID patient in the world right now. Um, it would not surprise me that there are pulmonary findings on imaging. Uh, you, it's hard to drop your oxygen saturation and have completely clear findings, but again, in medicine, we don't treat an x-ray or a CAT scan result, we treat the patient, and that sounds like that's exactly what they were doing. They also didn't answer a question that the public probably does, does have a right to an answer on, and that is when the president had his last negative COVID test, because that would affect the entire contact testing, contact tracing regime. 
A hundred percent. And that contact tracing that's going on now within the White House circles is very important, but it goes back to this false sense of protection uh, that I think was provided by, by the fact that they were testing everyone who was coming into contact with the president. Remember, those are with rapid antigen tests, which we know have a lower accuracy than the gold standard of PCR. Getting a negative result on a rapid test is not a license to go mask free and to go within six feet of contact. And George, this virus has shown us uh, to be sure that it can penetrate the White House walls and that it does not need security clearance. Finally, Jen, as a doctor, I'm going to bring in Cecilia Vega next. I was just wondering what your reaction was when you saw that tweet from the president. Don't be afraid of COVID. Don't let it dominate your life. You know, I think he's trying to give hope to the people who are suffering from COVID, but I think we also need to be very clear that his medical care is certainly not the medical care, sadly, of the average person dealing with COVID. And most patients with COVID are not admitted to a world-class medical institution. So uh, there, there are a lot of ways to look at it, but um, I'm sure we haven't heard the last of it. I'm sure we have not. Okay, Jen, thanks. Let's bring Cecilia Vega. She's up Walter Reed right now. Cecilia, this comes on a day when at least three White House staff staffers have announced they tested positive for COVID. Yeah, George, the number of people around the president in the White House who attended that uh, that Rose Garden event a week ago for his Supreme Court pick and then his debate preps a few days after that has grown. And frankly, it is growing at an alarming rate. We are now up to about 17 people total with perhaps the biggest name that America will know today, Kaylee McEnany, the press secretary, announcing that she is now among the people who has tested positive. She says that she has no, no symptoms at the moment, but we also know uh, that two of her deputies have since tested positive, a deputy con communications folks in that office there. A number of White House journalists have now joined the ranks. Uh, you've got people like Chris Christie. The list just goes on and on. Republican senators, George. And it is important to point out uh, that the Kayleigh McEnany particularly was just last night on the White House grounds briefing reporters and she took her mask off to have that conversation. There was some space between them, but nonetheless, she took her mask off. So while the White House, we are now seeing in the days since the president has been admitted here uh, to, this, to this hospital, George, a, a sort of a course correction at the White House in terms of behavior. We're seeing some aides, more aides at least, wearing their masks. Uh, that wasn't the habit just a few hours ago. And, and, you know, coming into this, before the president contracted and tested positive for this virus, COVID was the word he did not want to mention in this campaign. This was his polls were dropping because of his handling of the virus. Uh, Americans overwhelmingly did not trust anything that the president had to say about the virus. But now it seems that we're seeing a political shift from the president from inside Walter Reed here, George, as he's saying, don't be afraid of COVID, don't let it dominate. Uh, your life. That's a shift. He seems like the message is going to be that this is something that he's going to be talking about forcefully, that he overcame it. But George, I want to reiterate what Jen just said. He's not getting, the, he's getting treatment that most Americans, certainly those 200,000 dead Americans who died from this disease, did not get the level of care that he is receiving here at this hospital. And Cecilia, so much focus on the president's last negative test because we do know that he went to bed, Mr. that fundraiser and roundtable discussion on Thursday after knowing that Hope Hicks had tested positive, feeling some symptoms that day as well. We also know, you got this from Chris Christie last week when we were on GMA, that the White House contact tracing program has not been uh, by any means extensive or perfect. He said he hadn't gotten a call at all. I, factually, I think we can say that it's been a pretty abysmal, that their efforts to do contact tracing have, have been a failure uh, since all of this broke last week. Um, we just saw that uh, oh, last night, overnight, the president's been in the hospital for, this is the fourth day now, uh, that White House aides inside the White House received a letter basically telling them that people had been sick and saying that if you feel symptoms, don't come in. That's a letter that should have gone out the day that this happened, the day that Hope Hicks at the very least tested positive, uh, and if she started feeling symptoms. Those around her colleagues in the White House should have probably been alerted to that. So when we talk about contact racing at the White House, it's simply not really happening. It's not happening at a fast level. And you mentioned that that Bedminster trip, George. I mean, that really is a giant point that we want to that we should be we should be talking about. The president hadn't tested positive uh, when he went to Bedminster. At least that's what his press secretary said. But he's nonetheless knew that he had been around and near Hope Hicks, who was symptomatic. And therefore, he put those 200 some odd support who were at that fundraiser with him in jeopardy with this virus. Many more questions to be answered. Okay, Cecilia, thanks very much. But the headline right now, the president will be returning to the White House today at 6.30, according to his tweet. Of course, World News Tonight with David Muir will be covering that live. And our coverage will continue live now on ABC News Live. Have a good afternoon.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.